In 1871, Mrs. O'Leary was milking her cow, and the cow kicked the lantern over, and you know the story, the Chicago Fire. 17,450 buildings were destroyed in Chicago. Over 250 people died in that fire. Wiped out Chicago Eight, in 1871. Wow, the power of a tongue. God says it's like that. It can just rage and burn down a whole forest. And it started with just one person. Wow. Life and death are in the power of the tongue. One time on a Wednesday night in a little church that didn't have a wand or didn't have anything for kids, uh, there was a nine-year-old boy sitting there with his parents, bored to death, but a man stood and shared a testimony, and he said, I finished reading the Bible through this year. And to that little nine-year-old boy, he said, whoa, that's impressive. He read the Bible, the whole Bible through. And that little boy asked for a Bible for Christmas and began reading the Bible, and it's changed his life. And now he's preaching to you this morning, you know. And I know that man had little idea of the power of his testimony that night. He had no idea of a little nine-year-old boy sitting over there listening as he shared his testimony. But the power of the tongue, it can be so powerful. I remember when I uh, disagreed with the coach about how much playing time I got in football, and I disagreed so much that I finally quit the team. And, uh, and then the bad thing was I'm going down the hallway of the high school, and here comes the coach. <laughs> And I'll never forget that conversation. It was all one-sided. He did the talk and I did the listen. And he reamed me out. And I mean, he said to me, are you just going to quit every time things don't go your way in life? Is that what you're going to do? You're just going to be a quitter every time. And boy, he just laid it on me. And I walked away from him so mad because I knew he was right. I quit and I never should have done it. And from that day to this, anytime there's a temptation to even think about quitting, his words still come back to me. Are you just going to quit? Is that what you're going to do? Every time things don't go your way in life, you're just going to quit? No, no way. You know. Oh, the power of words. God says death and life are in the power of the tongue. He says in this passage that the tongue defiles the entire body. I want you to write that down. The first thing is defiles. The tongue defiles. The second thing this tongue does is destroys. Write that one down. It destroys or devours, I guess it says, devours. It can devour like a forest. It can devour lives. It can devour marriages. It can destroy. And then the third thing, I want you to see it in this passage. He speaks of beasts, of birds and reptiles and creatures of the sea. They have been tamed by the human beast or by the human race, but no one can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil full of deadly poison. And the third thing the tongue does, it deadens. It kills. Has, everyone, has anyone ever just killed your spirit by a comment? I mean, you were all excited and boy, somebody said something and wobble. You know, just it just killed it. You know? Ah, the power of death and life are in the tongue. God says we even train beasts. We train every species of birds and beasts and reptiles. And, and, uh, but no man can tame the tongue. Wow. Look at Proverbs 21. He who guards his mouth and his tongue guards his soul from troubles. Has your tongue ever got you in trouble? <laughs> God says our tongue is like a fire. Fire under control can bring warmth and light, can be a great blessing. But out of control, it can be devastating. Here's a third reason why I must watch what I say. It is because my tongue displays who I am. My tongue displays who I am. I can't see your heart. You can't see my heart. But you can hear my words. And my words are an indication of what's in my heart. Your words are an indication of what's in your heart. It tells us what's on the inside. It reveals your character. Look at what he says here, beginning in verse 9. With it, our tongue that is, with our tongue we bless our Lord and Father, and with our tongue we curse men 
who have been made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth come both blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not to be this way. Does a fountain send out from the same opening both fresh and bitter water? Can a fig tree, my brethren, produce olives or a vine produce figs? Nor can salt water produce fresh. He says, from the same tongue we bless God, we praise God, and we put down our brother who's made him in the image of God. Now, isn't that true? We've all done that. We all have to say, been there, done that. I'm guilty. You know, I've gone to church and worshiped God. And on the way home said, I can't believe Pastor Mitch. Can you believe that guy? He just, you know. And uh, I know you wouldn't do that about me. But, uh, <clears throat> and so God is saying this ought not to be that way. Our, 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 our tongue ought not to be that way. And it is an indication of our real problem. And he illustrates it through a well or a fountain, a spring, a well we might call it. And he illustrates it through a tree. A fig tree does not give out olives. A fig tree doesn't give grapes. And it gives figs. And so it is the source. And so here's my problem. My problem is my heart. It begins on the inside. It's what on the inside, it's what's on the inside that comes out. Look at what Jesus said. For the mouth for for the mouth speaks out of that which fills the heart. And I put the first line on there. I was going to eliminate the first line just for the sake of simplicity. Then I said, no, 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 no. I want you to see that first line. Because some people think that Jesus was sort of a, you know, pushover, easy going. Hey, look what he called these people. You brood of vipers. How can you, being evil, speak what is good? For the mouth speaks out of that which fills the heart. Woo, he was a courageous preacher, wasn't he? He said, you bunch of snakes. (laughs) <laughs> wow. It's like John Wesley. Wesley used to preach with, preach with blood running down his face because they threw rocks at him when he preached out on the hillside. You know? 